Landing. Oh, in the shrubs. Oh, it didn't land because it saw that it was an unsafe landing zone. Okay, let's bring you over this way. Okay, let's try landing again. I mean, the software of DJI cannot be understated. I just got to a shoot. Those are my tin of batteries. I'll probably only use four of them, but show you what I've brought with me. I have the quads. Uh, this is the 250 gram quad. Uh, it's actually, it actually is useful. And then in the trunk is a DJ quad. pretty much expect everybody doing a review on this thing to start the review with the startup sequence because it was the single coolest thing that I had ever heard from any product that I'd ever turned on. And I think it also means that it's got a speaker in there, which is a little bit odd. So this I literally carried around in a crate. <laughs> this is probably the single most leaked product of any product that I've ever witnessed in my life. And most people that are in any way interested in it probably know already a heap about the product. But I got a couple disclaimers to give before I talk about anything. So DJI is notorious for really, this is coming from me, not from DJI, not from anybody else. In my experience, DJI and a fan just turned on as well. It's like a flying laptop. DJI is notorious for releasing products that have relatively unfinished firmware. And I waited till the very last minute, literally the last minute, the sun's going down, it's like 5.15, 5.30 p.m. the day before it releases, to make this video in hopes that I would get a software update that would improve everything about the quad. So I actually don't think that this review, it's not even really a review, it's just a talk about it, or any review that's available right now or coming out in the next couple days is very useful or informative because it's unfinished and it's an unfinished product. And as we all know, the Mavic, the, pa the Phantom, and basically every single DJI product out there works at least really well, if not fantastically well. And I don't expect this to be any different. However, at this point in time, it seems excessive to go through a, a lengthy review on a product that is just not finished yet. And most likely it will get a software update in the first day or the first couple of days after release that will improve a lot of things that are wrong with the quad. So let's just jump straight to the flight footage and flight quality and let's talk about the, the video on this thing first. So as you can see, it's got a one axis gimbal built into it and it lets you adjust the tilt angle if you'd like. It's got three different modes, standard, um, sport, and full manual mode. And in full manual mode, it actually locks the camera angle and you can change it with the controller with a little uh, jog wheel somewhere yeah, up there, a little jog wheel. Uh, but in sport mode and in normal mode, it actually uses the gimbal. It keeps your video solid straight. You're like the one axis gimbal is actually in function. Also, the video feed coming off this camera in this firmware version, again, big disclaimer, the firmware is not finished is not as good as a GoPro Hero 8. However, it is pretty darn good. And more importantly for those that only fly FPV or only really interested in the FPV feed, the video coming out of the camera on this quad and going to the goggles is 
very comfortably a much nicer view than the standard DJI FPV camera, which is really, really, really nice to see. And every time that I made the switch from my own personal quad to the FPV, DJ, the, new FPV the new DJI FPV quad, I was taken back by how beautiful the picture was looking through the screen. So other things I want to talk about with the video is that this thing very much like a modern or a recent GoPro Hero has stabilization built into it. The gimbal is obviously stabilizing the pitch, but there's like um, movement in there. There's like um, uh, rubber bobbins in there for the gimbal itself. And it also has software stabilization for the video feed as well. And as I will show later in this video, it's pretty much required to make it look like it's even flyable. But uh, yeah, it's got image distortion correction, like the, the, the warp view of the GoPro that uh, Real Steady Go corrects is built into this, and you can actually fly through the FPV feed with that distortion correction. And before we continue on, let me back up a second and say that I'm going to be talking about this quad from the standpoint of somebody that already flies FPV, somebody that's familiar with traditional FPV systems. And so now let's take a look at the flight footage from the actual DJI Quad. And you'll see that in standard mode, or not standard mode, sorry, in sport mode, it's pretty peppy. And the, diff the only real difference between sport and normal mode is how quickly it allows you to fly forward. So in sport mode, it allows you to just go faster. In normal and in sport mode, the roll is roll it goes left and right but the yaw actually has roll and yaw mixed in with it so you could basically just fly it by pushing the pitch forward to go forward and then just rolling side to side and it also has altitude hold so the stick will stay in the middle and you'll just fly around with altitude hold you can go up and down just like a traditional mavic or a phantom nothing really has changed all that much from a traditional mavic or a phantom and uh, yeah, it's totally fine. It's actually pretty fun to fly around. However, for somebody that flies FPV already, I don't think those modes are really going to be useful because we already fly real, F like full FPV. Fortunately, there is a full FPV mode on this quad. However, the flight performance is circa 2016, 2017, maybe real early 2018 in the latest firmware. And I expect it to get a whole lot better. But basically, if we're in a windy or gusty environment, it's pretty much hopeless because it can't control itself enough for you to fly accurately and smoothly. And even in a perfect setting, you don't quite have the same fine throttle control, not throttle control, just overall control. Now, for those that are interested in the drive system of this quad, which I was particularly interested in, it's running, if the numbers on the blades are to be believed, 32, 32, no, 53, 28 props. So that's 5.3 inch props with a 2.8 inch pitch. The motor is, as far as I can tell, about a 2306 motor. I kind of took it apart, tried to measure things, and I got around 2306 numbers. So it's just really interesting to see the drivetrain train they chose because DJI does a lot of testing about drivetrains and various things before they actually put them on their crafts. So basically, the flight performance of this is not even all that much use to talk about because it's incomplete firmware. And I can envision a day when the firmware on this is actually really well tuned and well adjusted to work properly. And I think that I give DJI props for, for creating something that flies as well as it does first time out. I mean, DJI is used to having all these filtration and PID systems, but they focus more on their uh, auto level and their other self-automated systems than they do the core control performance systems. Now let's go over the quad real quick and talk about you know the quad itself. So the quad is not that special. You've already seen a whole lot about it and it's not that special because anybody watching my video probably has already seen all videos about or all <laughs> leaks about it. It's got a nice little quick quick release system. The thing weighs like 800 plus grams. It's pretty chunky. It's got a 6S 2200 milliamp battery on there. 
think it's a 2200 milliamp battery and it's good for a full nine minutes of FPV. It looks like a 2000 6S 2000. It's a 6S 2000 milliamp battery in this little tiny brick and it's good for a solid nine minutes of FPV. The battery has firmware built into it that must update from the drone itself which is interesting because if you update the drone, you actually need to wait for it to update each of your batteries the first time you use them and then restart the thing. And the main issue with the drone itself is that it has all the FAA safety, everything and beyond built into it. I think it's probably required, but I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. I just randomly found this statue and I, it's a no-fly zone, or near a no-fly zone, which is why I couldn't use it for the shoot that I was doing that was in the middle of nowhere. Which means that you cannot fly it in restricted areas. And if you're in LA like I am, or any area that's heavily populated and heavily populated with airports, you basically can't fly the thing almost anywhere. I mean, I was literally in the middle of nowhere as far as I could tell and I still couldn't fly the thing. So just finding places to fly it is a bit of a challenge if you're in a heavy, heavily populated metropolitan area. But other than that, the thing looks like this. It's got all the cool stuff built into it and it has all these sensors on it. That I thought was a landing LED, but I, I don't know. Oh my God, this is awesome. It actually is a light. How cool is that? <laughs> these cameras, are really good at informing you when you're about to run into something and they're so good that they often inform you when you're not about to run into something as well again the firmware is just incomplete and if these cameras get dusty it kind of doesn't work all that well it's got automatic takeoff and landing and that's that's all i really want to say about the drone itself because this video can go on forever uh, by the way i'm sure joshua bardwell has a very lengthy review about this these are the V2 goggles. As far as I know, I mean, I was using these for, for like two months and then it leaked that they're coming out with a V2 and then I asked them if I have the V2 and they said, yeah, that's the V2. So I can't really tell the difference between the V2. However, a couple days ago, I was speaking with Tommy about this thing and, um, oh my God, and I talked about how the FPV feed looks so much better from this thing than it does from the DJI FPV system from their default camera. And then the Nebula Pro is a little bit worse. And he thinks it could be because the goggles actually have a different screen in them, the V2 goggles. They have more resolution and maybe they have different screens with better contrast ratios. We don't know because we can't actually use the goggles with the previous FPV systems yet. We need a software update to bring those systems on board with these goggles. So it's unlikely because we both think it's because the drone itself has a much better sensor and lens system and that just seems obvious. But it's a possibility that the V2 goggles may actually create a much better looking FPV picture from the old cameras as well. However, again, probably not possible. The range on it, I've clocked it around two kilometers, two to three kilometers. I think they might say like five or six kilometers, maybe in ideal situations, but I've gotten, I've gotten a comfortable 1.5 kilometers. Two kilometers is pretty safe in my opinion. And the goggles also come with this nifty little battery that'll last you about 30 minutes of flying, which is kind of short, but um, it recharges really nicely. And I'll show you guys the charger in a minute as well. Here's the controller. The controller is a nifty little controller. I do not like the tiny little gimbals. They make it very hard to fly true FPV as in full manual mode. I really wish that they had made the, the, the gimbals at least as big as the previous FPV DJI controller. I don't know if this is gonna function with the existing air units and existing Vistas. It probably will. Um, the overall fit and grip and finish of this controller is actually really nice as with any DJI controller. I don't really know why there are these little gimbal inserts here for storage. I mean, it came with the gimbal, like things screwed on as well. So I'm assuming that you're supposed to put it in there so you can throw it in a bag. I'm not sure, but it's totally fine if you're planning on, on using this controller in the normal and sport mode, because 
you don't you, you kind of just knock the sticks around just like a phantom or a mavic so it's not really a big deal but for full fpv mode there just is not a whole lot of travel on these sticks so it makes it really hard to fly really fine things and you got to dumb down your rates really low to get it's kind of decent control of the thing. Now, before I talk about what I think is the coolest the part about this, let's talk about the charger, which I think mean, is pretty cool as well. So it's got this charging rail, which you plug your batteries into. And then when you plug the charger into the wall, it sequentially just charges each battery as it goes. So it, it'll take like two and a half hours to charge all three batteries, but it's just so cool that it just sequentially charges each battery. And of course you get all the smart battery tech built into the battery. So it's got, these batteries are full, but it's got self-management of the battery. So in 10 days, it will self-discharge the battery down to 50% for storage. And um, that's really, really nice. The charger also has a USB plug built into it so that you can charge the goggle battery. And now let's finally get to the coolest part, which is the motion controller. Now, this thing is surprisingly fun to use. Much easier in FPV, and it's having a lot of, oh my God, a lot of trouble Ooh, with the wind. Come on. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay. Okay, let's go down a bit. Come towards me. Okay, this is, this is freaking awesome. Flying this thing with this thing is awesome. It would be nice if it had like a little um, joystick so you can actually change altitude when you're standing still or somehow change altitude when you're standing still. But um, yeah, this is, this is freaking awesome. Even though it doesn't really work very well yet, I can definitely see a future in which this is freaking amazing. <laughs> and when have you ever seen a drone being flown and holding a phone at the same time. So if I turn it to the left, it turns left, right turns right. And then if I pull the trigger, it goes forward. And it goes up. And it goes down. This is so cool with the spotlight. Landing. Oh, in the shrubs. Oh, it didn't land because it saw that it was an unsafe landing zone. Okay, let's bring you over this way. Okay, let's try landing again. I mean, the software of DJI cannot be understated. It's so much fun to fly with this thing specifically. Uh, other things I wanna talk about is uh, in the actual flying of this in FPV, either in FPV mode or like full manual mode or in either one of the other modes, the OSD on the goggles are actually pretty awesome. Like really awesome. The home point is, point is like right there on the map for you. Just like point and shoot right at the home point with my phone being held in the goggles. So that dot that you see is my stick where I'm pointing. And I just lean the controller side to side. I mean, it's just so fun to fly this thing, even line of sight with this controller. And I'm flying this full line of sight in the dark, directly at myself. And you're seeing where I'm pointing. Spotlight is just so cool. It actually informs you when there are aircrafts approaching. 
which is pretty incredible, which means it's listening to the public broadcast of planes around in the area and informing you on the screen where they're approaching from. Uh, when you come near an object and the sensors are kind of sensing it, the edges of the screen flash red for where the object is. When you come near the ground, it's got a height altimeter on board that is accurate to like the tenth of a foot, which is really awesome, which I really wish I had on my traditional FPV quads as well. And overall, it's just, it feels like you're in a video game when you're flying this thing. So huge kudos to them on that aspect because it is so awesome. Now, let's talk about the whole value proposition of this thing and maybe who it's actually made for because I personally don't think this is intended for those that fly, that are already experienced flying FPV. Like, not new pilots. I mean, people that have been flying FPV for years. Like, I have, like, pretty much all the people they sent it to in the FPV sector have. And I'm pretty sure that everybody looked at this thing and they're just like, what on earth are they doing here? In my opinion, I don't see a whole lot of value in this thing and I can't really use it for any of the photography or videography or whatever shoots that I do because of number one, I can't fly it the places that I need to fly it, which honestly are in the middle of nowhere. And I've had issues where it just decides to land because it thinks it's in a restricted zone and it's actually not. Again, software thing, maybe there'll be an unlock, maybe there'll be something that changes, I'm not sure. But at this point in time, I can't use it for things like that. Uh, the fun factor of flying this thing compared to a traditional FPV quad, it's fun. It's just that the controller is so hard to actually control the thing with because of the tiny gimbals that it's a struggle. And even the regular DJI FPV controller is small for me, but it's fine. And I use that as my primary controller about 99% of the time because it's just so nice and clean. And um, the Mavic flyers love this thing to death, love this thing to death. And that's who this thing is actually made for. And overall, this craft is really a, a exercise in hubris by DJI because there are so many gizmos and just random things built into this thing to protect the user from themselves that it's, it's hugely limiting. Now again, as I've said over and over and over throughout this video, this is an unfinished product. It's pointless in my opinion to go through an extensive review and you could speak about these feature, the features on this thing for hours and hours on end. There is so much built into this and the value of DJI and their software and their systems that they update cannot be overstated because if you all look at how well a Mavic or a Phantom works, it's pretty freaking incredible. The value you get for <laughs> for just the, like what, 1200, 1500, I mean, you get like a one inch flying sensor with a giant lens on it for like $1,600 on a Phantom and it flies incredibly well and it has an entire software suite. It's just remarkable how much you get in the software side and the functionality side with a DJI product. And I don't expect this to be any different. However, right now, it's an unfinished product. So I really reserve judgment. I think that if you are if you are a Mavic flyer or a Phantom flyer and you're looking to get into FPV and you really wanna like fly FPV right now, the low latency video of this thing is such a joy and you're gonna love it so much. But if you already fly like even remotely just can fly a battery without crashing FPV. I don't think this is particularly for you unless you want something that flies closer to a Mavic. The flight time is really surprising for it to be nine minutes of full FPV flying. It's not as quick as your traditional 6S uh, five inch FPV quad, but uh, it definitely is not slow either. I'm gonna cut this video right here because it can go on forever and ever and ask all the questions that you'd like, but this isn't gonna be the only video I do on this thing. I'm going to be waiting for software updates and I wanna see where they go with the, thing, with the thing because I think it has a lot of potential. We just don't know quite how far it'll go at this point because it needs to be updated. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, bye.